transferring my total income to the line of credit, do I pay bills from the line of credit as they are due, or can I just do a weekly transfer back to my checking account to cover the bills? Uh, Felix, you can do both. It depends on your comfort level, right? So for example, you got the line of credit, right? And you have your normal checking account. Everything gets paid out of the checking account, right? That's where your bills come out. So when I receive income, it lands in the checking account first. When I'm doing Velocity Banking, after I've made my chunk, right? So now I'm in debt on the line of credit. I consolidated debt. That was the first move, right? That's all we did. If you make a chunk, you just consolidated debt to save money on interest. Now you get your income. Soon as the money lands into the checking account, I then send my entire check to the line of credit to not only make the payment on the line of credit in advance, but to also reduce the interest cost of borrowing. That's the whole idea. We're trying to debt consolidate and then reduce our borrowing costs to nearly zero, right? To actually save money, go faster while paying off debt. Okay. Well, once that occurs, his question, Felix is now saying, Denzel, should I be pulling money out daily or can I do weekly? You can do both, okay? The advantage of doing like almost daily or every other day is that you would be saving more money, okay? If you do weekly, you're uh, being a little more conservative and safe because you're saying, okay, over the next five business days, over the next seven days until my next paycheck, I need this much money to live, pay my bills, have money, so I don't overdraft on my account. Right? And that's fine. Nothing wrong with doing that. Does it cost you a little more to do so? Yes. Right? Because every day counts when you're doing velocity banking with your line of credit. Every day counts. All right? So I like to be, you know, like we're talking dollars and cents, Felix, in terms of how much savings. We're talking dollars and cents. So it may not be a big deal. For others, they're like, I want to maximize every dollar I can. And I would say, well, you just pull money out daily as you need it, when you need it to, to pay your stuff. And then you're good to go, good to go. Is it better to pay when the due dates are coming? In this way, more money staying in the line of credit? Yes, Stevie. The longer I wait to pay the bill, the better. Right. So if I got these certain due dates, I, I would rather pull the money out of the line of credit, either the date before to be safe. Right. Especially if you have auto pay, it might be better to pull it out the day before back to your checking account to uh, pay the bill so that you, you don't cause any any issues. Right. You don't want to go too radical with velocity banking where you, you know, you're pulling money out every day and then it's hard to keep up with it and then you make a mistake. So what Felix was thinking was, oh, what if I just do a weekly, like just you know, once a week? That could work. I don't wanna go too far out. For me personally, I go every three to five days. Every three to five days, I would pull money out of my line of credit back to my checking account to pay my bills if I was in debt, if I was doing velocity banking, okay? Since this bankruptcy is hurting me big time, I want to do velocity banking with my large debt, house, cars, and student loans. Might be pretty tough if you are in a bankruptcy. Might be nearly impossible to get a line of credit. I've had clients with bankruptcies and, you know, you might just have to go old school for a little while, rebuild the credit to get access to a line of credit over, over time. Okay? June says, I'm a manifesto client. Mortgage matures in 2027 will apply for PLOC, credit score 812, 6,400 a month in income. I inquired via telephone and was told 15.27% possible interest rate. Seems high to me. Yes to, to 10X. Um, yes, June. 15.27 is above my personal 
comfort level for a, uh, for a debt tool. That's too high. There's many, many other options, especially in this low interest rate environment where you can just uh, get so much less, right? So me personally, when it comes to personal lines of credits, I've seen rates as low as like between five and like 9%. I love these PLOCs. These are super low. Then you've got the little bit of the higher ones where it's like 10 to 13%. I can manage with it, but I promise you I will not stay there. I will upgrade my PLOC to a lower rate if I can find it within a year, you know? So I will improve upon that. My max is 15%. I do not want to go above 15% on any personal line of credit. In many cases, even 14% is no good, right? So what ends up happening is we would either improve your credit score, do debt snowball to try and get access to the sweet spot, you know, between five and 9% PLOC to then implement velocity banking properly. So that's how, uh, you know, I personally would like to operate. That's my comfort level. Um, you know, in some cases, maybe the PLOC is just too, too hard to get. And then we just start off with a credit card, maybe with, with a 0% offer or something like that. Uh, Denzel, can someone with a BK, BK bank account or, oh, a bankruptcy, get a secured line of credit or banks don't care that you secure it? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I want to say yes, but they might, I don't know, they might want some extra things. They might want to know some extra stuff. What's the difference between a P-lock and a Navy Fed C-lock? Okay. So a, um, this is for Lewis. So a C-lock stands for a checking Checking line of credit, PLOC, personal. Okay, that's the terminology. All right. In many cases, a personal line of credit typically has higher limits, higher limits, lower rate, higher limit higher credit limit, lower rate, and more flexibility, right? Meaning I can do more with it. I think I felt, felt flexibility wrong, so forgive me. Uh, higher limit, lower rate, more flexibility with a personal line of credit. With a checking line of credit, sometimes it's considered a overdraft account Typically, what I've seen, higher rate, higher interest rate, and lower limit. They might go as high as 15K, 10K, 5K, 3K. It's not as high as I would like them to go. From the ones that I've seen so far, I could be wrong. But for the most part, this is what I've witnessed so far with clients is the C-Locks are higher rates, lower limit, it's really an overdraft account, and it's less flexible, meaning you may not be able to do as much as you want to do with it, right? You might have to go through some extra hoops, extra you know, steps to uh, get what you want, right? So uh, when, when, I, when it goes in terms of a favorite debt tool, for me it's, uh, you know, cash value life insurance policy, then it's all in one loan, then it's the HELOCs, then it's the PLOCs, then it's, you know, the credit cards. Credit cards are great, um, you know, and then they can be used together. So everything can be used, you know, accordingly, um, effectively overall. Kevin says, thank you for inspiration. Paid off $50,000 of mortgage so far using your techniques. Uh, you did a recast loan and dropped payment more than half. Saved so much I treat so far. So much, uh, it's probably a typo. Saved so much money so far, wonderful. 
Awesome, awesome. Any ideas on choosing to start an infinite banking policy versus a velocity banking versus velocity banking my mortgage balance? Mortgage balance is at 180,000, 3.6%, cash flow is just over 2,000 a month. Just turned 29 years old. All right. Hey Denzel, I have a question. I'm no longer working on my company uh, or working at my company. I have a 401k. I don't know what to do with it or where to put it. I need to get a loan to pay my debt. Any advice? Okay, well, one option is I could kill it, cash it out, roll it over. Um, Because I think you have to do something with it. It can't just sit there idle. I think you have to either roll it over into, you know, somewhere else or cash it out, right? And depending on where you're at, your personal finances, that will, you know, you have to make that personal decision. What do I want to do? But here, those are the options, right? Israel, can you break down how to get a revolving personal line of credit and what is actually needed to get one? What banks ask for? Yes. If you go to my YouTube channel, right? And you go to, I have a playlist. It might be public, it might be not, but it's called how to get a line of credit or it's called all about the line of credit. I have a whole entire breakdown. I, I wouldn't be able to break it down in this video because it would take me an hour. So I have literally like, like 12 to 15 different videos breaking down how to get a personal line of credit, the questions you need to ask, how to position yourself, the pregame work that you need to do. Uh, it, it is a long uh, winded question that I don't want to waste too much time on because I've answered it so many times on my channel already. So just, you'll just, you know, go back. This, this won't be the video to do it, but you know, go back and you'll want to watch those videos. It'll be very, very helpful for you.